Hey, this is Idea Coach, he's for Coach, he's Roan. I'm in a new city with shitty lighting. All right, this is episode one of Idea Coach, he's weighing in on the weight classes, part A. I'm actually going to be reviewing today Dream 17. This is a preview. A few days after Dream 17 takes place on July 16th, I'm going to be doing a review video as a follow-up. I'm going to wait a couple of days after the event so I can let the matches set in and I can calm my adrenaline down. I think that the problem with a lot of MMA websites right now is that they write articles or they do a video post moments after seeing a fight. And the thing is, is that if you see a spectacular finish or let's say an exciting fighter has a boring fight, your scales of where they land at in the mixed martial arts world is completely altered. So hey, let's get into it right now. Tetsuo Kawajiri versus Drew Fickett. Okay, Drew Fickett is like the epitome of a journeyman. He has fought for just about every North American organization's 12-year career. From 2008 to 2009, he went 4-8, and eight, with all of his wins being finishes. However, six of those losses were being knocked out or technical knockout, which is really dangerous in the grounds of, for retirement, especially in lower weight divisions where knockouts are less frequent. Since then, he has went 5-1, and one, with the submission win over the sub-defense machine and the man that knocked out Vondelay Silva, Charles Crazy Horse Bennett. However, the one loss comes as his most recent fight against Brian Cobb. Look, I just don't see a way for Drew Fickett to beat the crusher Tetsuo Kawajiri. Many people know that Tetsuo was dominated by Gilbert Menendez in the first round back in Strike Force Diaz vs. Daly. However, for those who are unaware of Japanese mixed martial arts, Kawajiri, while never being the promotion's go-to man like Shinya Aoki for Dream or Takanori Gomi for Pride FC, Kawajiri is probably the most accurately rated fighter ever. Tetsuo Kawajiri beats people he should beat, and he loses to people he should lose to, and he should beat Drew Fickett. Hayato Sakurai versus Maurices Zoromskis. Okay, let's make one thing perfectly clear. When it's all said and done, Hayato Maha Sakurai will go down as one of the greatest Walter Waits of all time. The problem is that we're nowhere close to having it all said and done. After the brutal ass we put on Shin Aoki in Dream 8 on two, in 2009, he went 0-4. Even though the Nick Diaz fight that ended in the first round submission still showed that Hayato wants to win. It was an exciting one round of fighting. After a well fought if not boring battle with Jason High in Dynamite 2010, proved that Maha still has a fighting spirit that was not shown in the losses to Akihiro Gono or the first fight with Zamarskis. Okay, here's the thing with Maurice Zamaramskis. I watched the Dream Team weigh-in video, and this is the same event where the white mayor, Zamaramskis, knocked out both Maha Sakurai and Jason High the same night to become the welterweight champion. However, Hayato was actually the heavy favorite, but he had weight cutting issues. It was like four or five hours after the official weigh-in took place and he actually made regulation weight. After about four or five minutes of very, some, of very hard striking by both Maha Sakurai and the white mayor, Zamrowski's delivered a head kick which many people, including myself, thought that this was going to be a change in guard in the walkway division. That didn't happen. Although he delivered another brutal head kick that was even more highlight real worthy at Dream 10 to Jason High, the same night he defeated Maha, Maurice then fought some Korean jobber no one heard of before. I personally was in Korea at this time, training with Korean top team and team tackle, and I have not heard of this guy nor another of my teammates at the time of the fight. The man's name was Hobe Myung. It wasn't until he came to the States that the perception of this guy started to change. Nick Diaz and the man cyborg, Evaleska Santos, both gave him a TKO loss in the first round. Then there was a no contest because of an eye poke, which was accidental and I still don't understand why the match ended, to Joaquin Spirit Wolf. If anything, that should have been a point deduction. Whatever. 
Maybe the Cosmos helped him in his match with Sakuraba because of the ear tear. That match was also abruptly ended. After some guy I never heard of beats white man unanimous decision. And to just be honest, I would be surprised if anyone outside of Jordan Men's friends and family know who Jordan Men is. Jordan Men is, even after the win. No disrespect to Jordan. This is not a title fight. Sakurai does not deserve to be a title fight being Owen Ford the way he is right now. I see Hayato taking this to the ground and probably eking out a unanimous decision or getting a win somewhere late in the second to third round. Um, here's the thing. Dream needs Sakurai to win so they can set up a rubber band match so then they can have a title fight. Zamrowski is an incomplete fighter, so he's not going to hold the belt that long. And Sakurai is very old, so he's not going to hold the belt that long. Either way, we need to see a change in Japanese welterweight fighters at this point in time. Bantamweight tournament final. Masakazu Inimari versus Hideo Takoro. To Imari beat Takoro on points in the grappling tournament. Things have changed. Imari is a beast in the sub game, just like his partners, the current Dream Lightweight champ Aoki and the former Sengoku Lightweight champ Kitayoka, and is one of the top leg lock guys in all of MMA. Lately, however, he has seen difficulty with his opponents. The first half of his career saw a lot of victories come from submissions, and spectacular submissions at that. Since his Dream debut in 2009 at Dream 7, many fighters are prepared to defend from leg locks that he enjoys giving so much. He's 8-2 in his last 10, but only 3 of those 8 are finishes, of course from submission. The last one was against his toughest opponent since Babino Fernandez and Kenji Osawa. In a Verdun Fedor fashion, Inimari faked like he was knocked out from a ghost punch from Osawa just to uh, get into position to land a heel hook leading him to Hideo Kotoro. Please forgive the fan, it is so hot in here right now. Okay, Totoro is just a damn inconsistent fighter. He was once a journeyman himself and somehow has done just enough to be on the radar in the bantamweight division to make it to the finals. It's almost a Cinderella story if he wins this fight. His submission defense have always been a little suspect in my opinion in all the dream events I've seen him in. However, in the grappling tournament that he had with Inimari back in 2002, he held his own because there's no striking to distract him. And distraction is probably the best word for Inimari's striking. It's very flamboyant, very video game style. It's not meant to hurt you or anything like that. It's just meant for him to get close enough to you so he can get in a position to pull off a flying arm bar or wrap your legs around and get a leg lock. Um, that being said, I think that leg lock guys tend to defuse after the second round. And fighters know enough leg lock submissions, especially in Japan to prevent Inimari from winning. Um, with all the video footage on Inimari, I don't think Totoro is going to have any problems falling to the same traps that Kenji Osawa did in Dreams Fight for Japan. Lightweight Championship Fight, Hiroyushi Izumi versus the champion Gerard Musashi. I wouldn't go as far as to say that this is an easy fight. Izumi is another rugged, hard, but sloppy hitting Judica from Japan. j Guard, outside of that terrible King Mo fight from Strike Force in 2010, does have a killer instinct. Most judo fighters have poor control from side or they like to sit in the guard of their opponent. Izumi does not seem like an exception to this. Combined with Musashi's reach advantage, superior striking, and nullifying abilities from guard, I can see a second round KO play um, at the very latest. It's just nice to see that in Japanese mixed martial arts, title belts are being defended more regularly. This is one thing that helped Pride FC back. Featherweight Championship fight. The challenger, Kazuyuki Miyata versus the champion, Hiroyuki Takaya. And probably the most difficult matchup to call in the entire card, we have the Featherweight Championship fight. Little Hercules 
Kazuyuki Miyata, the challenger, versus the street fighter himself, Hiroyuki Takaya, the champion. Miyata's last nine fights have seen seven wins with only two of them being finishes. The two losses were back-to-back -back in late 2007 and early 2008, both rear naked chokes. Takata's last nine fights has him looking at a 6-3 and three record, but four of those wins being finishes. As for the losses, they run down like this. One TKO to Michihiro Omigawa in 2009's Dynamite, and two split decision losses from Babino Fernandez, which he later avenged, and most recently, Roberto Parata and Strike Force. Even though their recent records is quite similar, the level of competition is not. Miyata being the physically stronger of the two is wrestling strong. That's why Takaya has more KO victories over his opponents than Little Hercules does, because knocking someone out is more about speed and precision, and that's just something Miyata does not have or has not displayed yet thus far. If this was the UFC, I would take Miyata in a heartbeat. However, when dealing with the fighter that has a kill switch over a fighter that does not in Japanese mixed martial arts, I have to go with the kill switch fighter. Miyata is not so much about takedowns as he is about getting to the clinch and then moving in position from there and doing all those crazy suplexes that he likes to do. Yes, you know, Kazuyuki Miyata has beaten Nuye, but Takaya is a much higher level caliber fighter. And if he can avoid those suplexes, he should be able just to get the unanimous decision win. Like I said, this is a very, very tough fight to call, and either one of these two fighters will have the belt for some time. Okay, there are three fights I've purposely not previewed for this upcoming Dream 17 event. The first one I did not do was E.G. Mitsuyoka versus Bruno Carvajo from Brazil. Then there was Kisuki Fujiwara versus Kenji Osawa. And then the last one I, I did not do was Tetsuya Mizuno versus Trevor Pangley. Um, I just don't care about these fights. I will review them if there's any controversy to these fights, if there's any sort of title implications, if, there's, if they were exciting, or if there's like a spectacular finish in somehow. I know that the Osawa-Fujiwara fight, they may be the top contender for the next bantamweight championship fight that's taking place at a later time. However, they are also in the semifinals, so you might just be seeing a rematch that took place in Dream Fight for Japan. All right, guys, I'll check you guys out in a couple of days after Dream 17. Take care.